Welcome back to Best Life and Beyond, everybody. We are uh, we're back at Disneyland today. We're gonna try Genie Plus on the weekend. We it's... figured not just the weekend. But we figured a good time to do this would be on a somewhat busy Saturday night. Yeah. We waited purposely until about three or four o'clock in the afternoon when the wait times are pretty much at their highest point. Right. We're gonna purchase the Genie and see what we can accomplish. Yeah. Of course, we're gonna come back as usual and try to do it without the genie. Of course. So well, you can have a direct comparison. Contrast and compare. And right now it looks like, you know, you've got like 55 minutes for Matterhorn. You got like 60 minutes for Haunted Mansion. Those are kind of the times we're looking at. Uh, so it'll be a good test to see how this works in the context of, you know, being a crowded Saturday. Semi-crowded, I should say. We pulled over under the uh, monorail tracks here so that we could uh, make the purchase Okay, so it says get started with the genie. So we'll hit start now. Okay, it says select a park. We're at Disneyland. Katie and Spencer. Um, now it's asking my top picks. Let's see, what are our top picks? Let's say Big Thunder. On a mansion holiday, small world, and Matterhorn. I'd say those four are our top picks. Okay. Our interest is. I'm not gonna pick park interests. We don't need disability or accessibility. We're entering full strength magic mo mode. Genie Plus is twenty dollars per guest, so it'll be forty dollars for us. Um, it says after entering park, you'll be able to book the next lightning lane. Okay, so this is not the a la carte. This is just lightning lane, Genie Plus. Right, exactly. Okay, goodbye, forty dollars. What used to be free. All right, so we have it today. Now this would be cool because. If once we get our, um, what are they called, magic bands, we'll be able to use magic bands. For now, we must use our phone. Okay, so what do we want to book first? It says our top experience that would be fastest for us right now would be Small World Holiday. Let's do it. So let's hit select experience. Okay, it says 4.10 to 5.10, and it is 4.09 right now. So we could go on it literally right now. Right now. And the wait time currently, I believe, is 50.50 minutes if you're in standby. Is that correct? Yeah. So overall, I can already tell you we've done this in Florida when it first launched. I would say, and again, I'm only going off of Florida, but I can already tell you my prediction. My prediction will be that it is a good thing, but I think... I think it's only going to be good if you really know that that's what your goal is, is to get on a lot of attractions. Right. And you're not here super frequently and, you know, whatever. But it's your money. You do with it what you want. If you want to spend $20 and get on a lot of rides for the day, go you. Sure, but there's also the uh, scenario of you show up at 4 o'clock like we did. You get on some rides that don't have extreme wait times. You go get something to eat, you go hang out, you go people watch, you walk around. Watch a parade. Watch a parade, watch see some fireworks. entertainment. And then as the night progresses, the wait times start to drop and you're able to get on those rides like we did the other night for my birthday. We were able to do four rides in less than an hour. Matter so twice in a row. Right, all attractions that right now are 45 to 50 minutes long. So it really depends on, like Katie said, your approach. Are you trying to get on a lot of rides right now? that's why you came then you know and if you're not here a lot sure it makes a lot of sense so we're gonna test it out we're gonna uh, kind of check the the standby times as well and compare and uh, we'll see how it goes the thing I'm curious about is are we gonna be able to ride something twice in a row so say I wanted to book small world holiday again could I 
I don't think you can in the original design. I, I was my understanding was that you could only do a lightning lane one time uh, under the paid umbrella. Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find I'm gonna out. Try to book it again once we get off. Right, because I've heard I've heard people saying that they could do it a couple times. I'm like that is not what I heard in the original design, but let's give it a try. All right, let's do it. On our way over to uh, Small World, and uh, we're just taking a look at the Matterhorn queue. It's wrapping almost down to the original queue down here, and it's saying 50 minutes, 5-0. That looks to be fairly close to that, but I don't really know, but it looks to be an extensive wait for Matterhorn right now. All right, approaching Small World Holiday with our lightning lane, and it's pre-parade time. You can see everybody queued up over here in the Small World uh, Pavilion parade route. This is one thing where I'm really happy we're getting Magic Bands because the signal is not good at Disneyland, and every time we have to pull open our app and get our uh, passes out, and sometimes the app just doesn't want to load, it doesn't work. That's the one problem with Genie Plus so far, is the bandwidth of the internet here. Yeah, and I yeah. would say take a screenshot of your passes, because it's going to be not fun. Yeah. So here's the old standby right now, says so 45 minutes for Small World. Oh wow, yeah, that's a good, that's about a 40 minute wait. Really? You think so? Yeah, it's it's all doing all the, the backflips back there, what do you call it? The uh, switchbacks. Switchbacks. Yeah, that, that's Duty, what do about, you think? You think it's 45, buddy? He says it's about 35 to 40. All I right. don't think it's exactly 45. Okay. Wow, this totally gives me max pass vibes. I know. Oh, the train's coming through. I love this. It's the best. There she is. Holiday 5 coming through. You can see the standby line all the way back to the gate, to the parade gate. Katie thinks that's about 35, so it's semi-close. It's about 35, maybe 40. Yeah. Maybe. It Plus, just depends. Sometimes well, you have, to, you have to add in the fact that all of us in the lightning lane are stopping that flow. Yeah. And I'm not sure what the ratio is. It's like... 20 lightning lanes per. I, I feel like they take an average a little bit. Um, I see that they're giving people those little time card pass things. Oh, red card. To yeah. judge. Yeah. So it's it's like I said, it's, it's hard to say. You're never gonna get this exact time, you know, where they right. say it's 45 and it is exactly 45. You know, because again, how many, look at, there's nobody showing up for lightning lane at this exact moment, so they're flowing. Now we started this at 417. When yeah. we walked into this line, so I'm going to oh, see okay. what time it is when we get okay. to the actual boat. When we sit in the boat? Yeah. Uh, the last bit of light of the day being captured by the gold spires of It's a Small World. How do you feel about getting the first ride of the day here? To be honest with you, I think it's well deserved. Oh boy. I'm just kidding. Oh boy. Um, I'm actually really happy about it. I think it's really nice because we did a lot for your birthday and it was a lot of the rides you wanted to go on and the whole time I kept walking past Small World like... Do we want to book our next thing since we're already in the queue? Oh, you're right. Good idea. So that's something we learned at Walt Disney World was once you pass through and we've, you know, got our lightning lane, we can book another one. So what's near here? Roger Rabbit? Let's try for Roger since it's right here. Telling us that Big Thunder is 435 readily available. So that would be a good option. Haunted Mansion Holiday 6.30, Matterhorn is 5.30, Autopia is 4.45, Astro Blasters is 4.30. So it seems like we should choose something around 4.40. Roger? Roger saying? 4.40. Do you want to book that? Just since it's... Uh, in, we'll be in off right away. Close proximity. Take four. All right, stepping on. 421. Welcome back. Four, four minutes. That was very lightning ish. Yeah, I'm kind of. Kind of. Um, what's the word? It's kind of a whirlwind how quick it is. Like, you kind of just choose stuff and go, go, go. Like, it is. It is you, fast. You kind of forget that when we had Max Pass, it was just. We did this all the time. I wish that they would allow us to buy this and put it on our annual pass or our magic key. Yeah. I really wish we could pay the extra just to have that. That would but be smart. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. I'm very, very curious how much we'll get done. Yeah, well that was four minutes, so that's a good start.
All right, it's 4.45, so that was uh, about 20 minutes. Yeah, it took longer because I think some of the boats got held up. We had a, we had a little traffic jam inside. A boat jam. A boat jam. Uh, but now we're headed to Toontown. Roger Rabbit, we already booked it. Okay, Roger Rabbit went down just as we were about to approach, but they gave us a multiple experience. Pretty much the same thing as the old uh, Max Pass. So, so what does that mean? Do we choose something else or we can just walk up to anything We can else? walk up and then you just hit redeem. Oh, That's okay. It. Yeah. All right, let's um, head so, out to Toontown then. Yeah, the parade's about to start pretty soon. So I ordered us some coffee at Red Rose Tavern. If we could beat the, the parade crowd, uh, we would be able to get some coffee and then be over on the Fantasyland side. Adventureland, yeah. New Orleans Square. Yeah. There's Dumbo. It's showing uh, 15 minutes. I'm thinking that's a parade time. The result of the parades. Yeah, we walked past Storybook and Storybook was like walk-on. Pretty much a walk-on, yeah. So there's, yeah. you got the parade effect. It's like the fireworks effect. Mm -hmm. We could have done Storybook, but I need some coffee. Yeah. It's getting chilly. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> About four o'clock, I usually, four or five o'clock, I'm like, okay, I need coffee. As the sun goes down, Katie goes down. Exactly. We have arrived at Red Rose Tavern, picking up our coffee. Oh. So there's two different ones. There's the Mickey, like, the one that looks like the body with the head. Mm -hmm. And then there's just the head version. Yeah, which they're both absolutely It's the delicious. same recipe, just different shapes and accoutrement. Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Uh, I will say, though, I'm not even the biggest gingerbread fan, but Disney gingerbread, it is way different. It's got a whole different vibe to it. All right. It is so good. Oh, my goodness. You get the part with the white chocolate, but nothing like a gingerbread and some hot coffee when it's nice and cold during the holiday season. I'm good for the day. Oh, that's good. It's so good. All right, so interesting the multiple experience aspect. I remember that from Fast Pass or Max Pass. Yeah, if a ride went um, down. I never, never really thought of that in the context of you know how Lightning Lane worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. If something goes down, you get the option to you know go into a different lightning lane of your choice basically for your trouble right which this is gonna really help because the availability for thunder mountain if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong i think it was like 5 45 or like six ish so i think we'll be able to just like walk on i mean we can go on a lot of attractions right now as long as it has lightning lane so before you purchase i would say also take a look and see what attractions are lightning lane attractions because if it's you know a bunch of dark rides or things like you know that don't even offer lightning lane right that's another thing to factor in if you don't think it's worth it yeah because the dark rides like you're saying in fantasy land are not part of lightning lane mm -hmm. even so, peter pan which is the most sought after of dark rides in fantasy land is exempt from lightning lane so mm -hmm. so that being said, you really just have to, you know, when, when people ask us a lot, is it worth it? That is reliant on so many factors, you know. Are you wanting to go on Thunder Mountain 14 times really quickly? Are you, right. what are you wanting to get on? How frequent, how many hours are you gonna be here? Is it a busy, particularly busy day when you're here? You have to really look at it and make that judgment of what it is you wanna do is the day really going to call for it? Um, well, and my thing is, if you're one of those people that wants to get on things multiple times, come early. You can get the Lightning Lane, buy, purchase the, the Genie Plus, but come early and don't use it. Get on as many attractions as you can without right. it. And then as the park gets crowded, then implement the Genie Plus and right. get your second ride in. Like another know. thing, I think it's like Spencer mentioned earlier, we could use it right now. But then come 9.45, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 11.30, you don't really need it. No, so no. you just have to think about the time frame 
like we were saying. Maybe you're only you know, going to be here from morning until 2 or 3 o'clock. Right. Then in that case, maybe it is more worth it. You know, it just do you have a lunch reservation? Do you have a dinner reservation? A breakfast reservation? You have to really look at your day and what you want to do. Also, I recommend checking the Disneyland app when you're not here and try to gauge like, okay, we're going to be there on a Wednesday. It's the Wednesday before. Let's take a look at the app and see what it, what it's looking like throughout the day. And you can kind of get a gauge. I mean, it's not always going to be exact, but you can kind of get a gauge of like, how is it on this day last week? Was it worth it? Do I need to get it? Is this week going to be a holiday week? Do I need to take that into consideration? Those types of things. Right. Remember when you said you wanted a bite? The whole head was gone. I was taking little pieces. Yeah, you were. Oh. Mm-hmm. I want a bite. She gets angry about this chicken bread thing. Yeah. All right, so we have our multiple experience pass. We're not going to use it yet. I saved that like a wild card. But I was looking, and I noticed uh, we're right next to Matterhorn. By the time we finish our coffee, it's 5.03 for us right now. Let's book Matterhorn because we can go right on it since we're standing right next to it. There you go. All right, we are at Matterhorn. It's claiming a 40-minute standby. Pretty messy up here. Lightning Lane also pretty jammed up. We got in line at 520 okay. for Lightning Lane. Let's see how long this takes. And it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit impacted right now because the parade ended a few minutes ago. Yeah. So usually after the parade, expect a little bit of craziness. Right. Our best recommendation is if you know that there's a parade going on, check those times. Usually, I think it's what like five-ish by the time it's here. Go on the opposite end of the park. Stay over by Winnie the Pooh. New Orleans. Haunted Mansion, New Orleans Square. Um, if you don't, you know, say you want to just do rides, yeah. you know, you're not trying to actually see the parade. Um, we kind of anticipated this. But it's I also, also a Saturday wanted, night, yeah. I also wanted to see it at its worst, you know, Yeah, oh like, yeah. When it would be the heaviest. This is a test. Yeah. Which this is no different than a busy Max Pass day. That's true. This feels exactly, we waited in this little roundabout, you go scan your ticket and that's it. Now is where we scan in, and there's two scanners. There's like one here and one over there, and they're kind of multi-sided. So, oh, what just happened there? We booked it for 5:15, and it knocked it back to 5:45 somehow. Not sure how that happened, but it did. Um, so we just used our multiple experience and canceled it out. Yeah. Okay, it is 5:27, so we're gonna book Big Thunder Mountain while we're in line here. So it's between 5.30 and 6.30. Those are our next attractions. 5.31. 5.31. And what time did we get on? 20. So that was 11 minutes compared to 40. Well, probably 30, to be uh, fair. It's pretty packed right now. I think it's about 45. All right. 11 minutes. Not bad. Just oh, in front of me. Here we go. Once you have checked into your Lightning Lane attraction and you're in line, to book the next one while you're in line before you even get off the ride. I think that's crucial. It makes a uh, lot of a difference. If you're trying to maximize, you know what I mean? If you're trying to ride crush, right? Um, so there you go. Uh, on to Big Thunder. All right, 547. It's a standby is 45. All right, five minutes, and we are at the ride gate in five minutes. So I switched to DCA. Yeah. It said I can buy the Horseland Dreamy um, Adventures Racers, but I stopped it. So I'm going to have to go pick was in Credit Coaster. There you go. Uh, we're not going to do it yet, though, because it says 655 or 7.55, and we're still going to be here. Okay. So I'm going to check on it and go when it's a little bit closer to the end. Okay, cool. Here we 
with the Mark Twain smoke going through it. Pretty cool. There she goes. All right, so we just took a little dinner break over at Galaxy's Edge. Uh, we did a little live stream and took a little break. And now uh, we're going to jump over to California Adventure to utilize the rest of our, you know, Genie Plus for the night. Um, we could have gotten on Haunted Mansion. Yeah, that was just a little bit later by yeah. the time the live stream. It, it just didn't time out very well for us. Um, the other one we were going to do was Indiana Jones, but I don't think that really needs a Genie Plus. Yeah. The way they give you, if, if I remember from Max Pass, it doesn't make enough of a difference. Yeah, so, you know? but so far uh, it worked pretty well. And I think that uh, going forward, because we want to jump over to DCA, we wanted to kind of give a, I don't know, kind of an honest way of how we would do the park anyways on a Saturday. We wouldn't stay here the whole time. And no, we especially stay not there. during Festival of Holidays. Another thing that I found really difficult, which was switching from one park to the other you have to like go in to your day change it around it was really hard to figure out for me for like a good 10 to 15 minutes yeah i tried to screen uh, that's a uh, splash mountain measure <laughs> i tried to screen record it but it just took too long and like it, who wants a clip of me for 15 minutes scrambling around my app it that's just one thing that right. they should fix i also heard from somebody that when they went over to dca that it was difficult to switch and that it didn't automatically recognize that they were there, which it seems like... We have that technology. Either way, I, I feel like that they need to maybe fix that. But other than that, so far so good. Let's head over to uh, DCA and see what we can get done on the old Genie Plus. All right, so we could have done Haunted Mansion Holiday, but we wanted to get over to DCA because it closes earlier. As you can see, this is the Lightning Lane line right here. This is line for DOS or Lightning Lane. Okay, headed out of Disneyland through the beautiful Main Street area. We are now out of the gates and... Through the woods. Yeah, over the, over the Esplanade and through the woods. We're gonna, uh, we're jumping on a credit coaster, right? Is that our next? Uh... Yeah, we, when I was able to switch the park, it took a minute, but I was able to switch the park and the only thing that was available within the next like hour was in credit coaster and mission breakout. We don't do Guardians. Hello, train. We don't do Guardians, so we chose Incredicoaster. Yeah. Uh, so if you wanted to do Mission Breakout, you could go on that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to do Monsters, Inc. after that. Um, or it was, I don't think they had Lightning Lane, but I definitely want to see if we could maybe go on uh, Mater's Jingle Jamboree. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. He has a Jingle Jamboree. We'll see. And I didn't see it on Lightning Lane, but I also didn't really get too much time to look. I kind of had to, like, pick something and go. Yeah. So we'll check it out and see what it's like over there. All right, we've arrived at the Incredicosta. 45 minutes standby. That looks like it's, like... Lightning Lane has quite a few people in it here. This looks like a 20... Probably, uh, yeah, 30 or less is probably what that real standby is. All right, so we entered this queue at about 8.05. Yes. So we'll see how long this takes. So far, it's 8.06. So we're going to book uh, Monster Inc. Okay. From 8.10 to 9.10. All right. Done and done. And done. Okay, it is 8.13. All right, so...
me. Um, after we go on uh, Monsters, it, it basically said you're totally good to book it again if you wanted to. Interesting. So you just have to make sure that you don't have another one on there or something like that. So that's pretty cool. And on our way over to Monsters, Inc., I think we might grab something from a booth over at the Festival of Holidays because we have tabs left and there was no lines. Yeah, we're tab heavy still. Might get a little snack. Yeah. All right, we came over to Making Spirits Bright. And uh, what did Katie get? She got the tart, I think, right? And she got the hot cocoa marshmallow. Yeah. Both of them. Yes. Thanks, bud. We'll save, them. See you. we'll save them for dessert. Okay. All right, I got myself the old bourbon cranberry cocktail. It's bourbon cranberry orange juice, house-made cinnamon sugar syrup with a cranberry garnish. It's a festival feast miracle. All right, beef pot roast, I think is what that is, right? Yeah, we've had that before. I just did it without the um, horseradish. Right. So this one's mine, clearly. Yeah. Yes. Adam is here. Hi, Adam. What's up? Uh, you got the... Uh, Gingerbread Mickey cookie. There it is. And the bourbon cranberry is quite nice. So good. Such a good nosh. I love this. Okay, real quick. Mostly kosher's playing, so I'm going to... We're going to pop into this and see how it is. Ooh, all right, take a bite. Is that chocolate in there? No, it's cinnamon. Oh, cinnamon. Good. A little dry. You know what? Teamwork makes Yeah, I wish it were warmer. Okay? You can take it home and reheat it. Yeah? Get up! That was warm, yeah, it'd be better. Just a little dry. But good. Campfire. Is that a s'more macaron? Yeah. Oh boy. That's my favorite. All right, that little nosh was good. The festival has closed. It's a little after nine o'clock. We are heading to our lightning lane of Monsters, Inc. A ride, an attraction of which we have not done in quite some time, so this will be fun. And the fireworks are going off at Disneyland right now. <laughs> Believe in holiday magic. You can believe in it right here at DCA as well. Looking good, Goof. See you, buddy. All right, Monsters, Inc. Mike and Sully to the rescue. So it says five minutes uh, for standby, so either way, we're good. So we got lightning on the left, standby on the right. Uh, it says five minutes, so I don't even know how much better lightning's gonna be, but we'll see. So it's 916. And it's saying standby is five minutes. Let's see if uh, if we get in there before 21. Monstropolis Chamber of Commerce. So 918, two minutes. All right, jumping on the freeway. Hello. But but it picked me up with its mind powers and shook me like a doll. Happy birthday, Smokey Poe. Oh boo, we gotta get you home. Wazowski, and on my birthday, I thought you cared about me. Celia, try to understand. Monsters was great. Uh, it had been a long time. Now we are headed to Radiator Springs Racers. We bought the a la carte, so we're gonna head there now. And when I say we uh, purchased this a la carte, uh, we bought it separate outside of the Genie Plus fee. You can just do these. You don't even have to buy the Genie Plus $20 thing. You could just buy the a la carte if you wanted to just do this ride. Uh, yeah, so we did that. It cost us $12 each person. 12 bucks. And those those prices vary depending on the uh, the day. Yeah, yeah. I think it's due to capacity or right. popular days. I don't know. But it was 12 bucks. We did it for you guys to show you. There you go. And then you enter at the Lightning Lane entrance under the Lightning Lane tire right there. Okay, so it's 9.34 entering the line. So the app says standby is 45 minutes. So 
this is quite a time saver. If you really wanted to get on this attraction, I definitely think the $12 is worth it. If you're only here for a day. Um, well, I mean, maybe you want to go every day, you know? It's yeah. How you want to spend your money is up to you. You know, I guess you just kind of have to like make the decision where at least showing you what you get for that $12, like how quickly it can go. Right. I mean, we probably will get like, we could honestly book another ride on Incredicoaster if we wanted to, you know? So, you have to think about it. All right, so 9.43, we're on the ride. That was 10 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Is going to wrap it up. We, uh, I think it was, I think it worked out um, as far as we, we're not huge ride people in the first place. We don't come here to, uh, as Bricky would say, crush rides. So I'm wiped out from just doing, I think we did five rides between the two parks. And we actually could have done even more. We probably but we could have took, done seven or eight. But yeah, we, we took a break to eat twice yeah. and we did a live stream. Yeah walking around Galaxy's Edge. So had we not done that, we probably could have done maybe like eight. Yeah, I would say honestly. so. Honestly. And that was in, in six hours. And even in this time when you're here at closing, we could have done another one after Radiator Springs, yeah. but we chose not to because we're exhausted. We're exhausted. Um, so if you think about it, in six hours, getting here at four o'clock on a Saturday during the holidays. When it's busy. Yeah, it's some of the lines that we averted or avoided. I don't even know if that's the right word. We're like an hour long and we, you know, scoot it up in 10 minutes. So is it worth it? Uh, in some cases, yes. Um, if you're ride crushers, I would say, yeah, it is, right? Yeah, so I guess the best thing we can say is if you really do want to get on rides, set aside that extra money yeah. and maybe see how it works for you once. You don't have to dedicate to doing it the entire time. Right. Remember, our best tips for if you want to do it without spending the money, our best tips are to get here very early, about an hour before the park opens. Yeah. In that first two to three hours, you can get a lot done or stay for the last two hours of the park uh, being open and you can pretty much accomplish a good amount of rides. You can. So, you know. And, uh, you know, you have the choice to, if you want to purchase Genie Plus for 20 bucks, you have all the lightning lanes that used to be fast passes, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you just want to do an a la carte and you just feel like, you know what, we got on a lot of rides this morning when we were here, but we wanted to do Radiator or we wanted to do Rise, or you can buy slingers, those, or Web Slingers, yeah. you can buy those separately without buying the Genie Plus 20. So there's that option. So yeah. hopefully that was informative to you. Uh, that was our experience with it. Uh, the purchase Genie Plus. Yeah, there you go. So uh, if you enjoyed it, you found it informative, please give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And we will see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye-bye, everybody.